<laughs> so today I know that there's going to be a load of really useful information because I know Javier well and he is a mine of really powerful information. And I think we're going to get some fantastic tips this morning. I'm going to get my notebook ready and uh, I should be squiddling furiously. Javier, over to you. Thank you very much David. Today's talk is called Five Persuasion Techniques that will help you set, uh, double your sales overnight. Okay. You may think that it's exaggerated, but it depends on how much value you can extract from my words. It is important that you pay attention to every single thing that I say, so from this moment onwards, it's important also that you use your imagination, as we're going to be talking about this, and particularly how to elicit certain states on anyone that you want to influence and why that is important. Now, let me ask you a question at the beginning of the talk right away. What do you sell? Most probably you sell something. Correct? Even if you think that you don't sell something, you are selling something. But most probably, if you are here today, you are selling something. Either you're selling yourself, you're selling an idea, or you're selling a product. Now, do you like to sell? If I ask around, most probably, most of you <coughs> can tell me that you don't particularly like to sell. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Sales is not something that we naturally enjoy, right? Since the moment we're born. It's like, I'm going to be a baby that I'm going to sell everything to everyone. It's not how we're born usually. Now, at the same time, we all have to influence people in one way or another. If I'm a mother or a father, I want to influence my teenage child so that they will do certain things that they may not want to do. Okay? The worst possible way to do it is to antagonize someone, to confront them in any way. But there are all the ways to do, which is to align their interests with yours, or to align your interests with theirs. Okay? Now, it's very important if you do it the right way, rather than trying to force it upon them. Usually, when we are learning to sell or to influence others, we get uh, taught a lot of techniques that are mainly aimed at the conscious mind. And here's where the first important thing comes here. We have to realize that most of us are governed by a set of laws that most of the time belong or respond to subconscious commands. That means that we've got two channels where we think that we have one. Now, the subconscious mind is so important because the subconscious mind is full of associations. Everything counts. Everything that we have ever experienced has left an imprint on us. Everything counts and things are either positive or negative. Now, part of what you want to do when you are influencing somebody is to manage the environment, making sure that every single thing that they're exposed to is a positive influence in their subconscious mind and will elicit positive states that will be associated with your product or your person in a positive way, of course. Now, let me ask you another question. Why are we trying to influence people and what are we trying to do as we do that. I'll tell you the three main things that I think that we should be doing. Even if we don't realize that we're doing it's important to think about these things from time to time because what's the point otherwise of coming to a place like this if we don't really know what we're doing or we never pay attention to what we're doing. Now what we're trying to do is to capture the attention of a person, definitely. You will agree with me that Oftentimes, we are listening to somebody's 40 seconds and 50% of the time our mind is not connected there. We're just simply not listening. Our minds are somewhere else. So remember, if we don't have the attention of the person, we have nothing. 
That's a very important point and it's something that we always have to remember. Some of you may have uh, seen me already that sometimes when people are talking, I'm going to do my 40 seconds, I take a deep breath, I wait until the attention is centered on me. Only then I have just a little bit more of a chance that people will hear what I have to say. But it's not always the case. Our minds are often somewhere else. The second thing that we want to do is to lead people's imagination. Okay? We want to create mental pictures in the mind. And the third thing that we want to do is to elicit states. We want to elicit states, as I said before, that are positive. And we want, as soon as those states are elicited, we want to associate them, using these techniques, with ourselves. Now, human beings are interesting creatures. We think that we're in control, but we're not really in control. In fact, we are responding to these subconscious commands that I mentioned earlier. What happens is that our positive or negative associations will influence and get attached to anything that is exposed to us or that we're exposed to. Now, how can we manage the associations, elicit certain states and lead the imagination of our prospect or anyone that we want to influence? The first and easiest way to do it is to manage the environment. How can we manage the environment? First tip there, manage the environment. Everything, absolutely everything that your client, customer, anyone else that you want to persuade is exposed to should be positive, should be a good positive thing. Those paintings there, if they're not good enough, they're not helping what we're trying to do here. Everything counts, remember. It, everything is subconsciously being registered either as positive or negative. Nothing is neutral for the subconscious mind. That's important to remember. Now, as you manage your, the environment, there are three main things that you can manage. One is using light and visuals to your advantage. The second one is using sounds. The third one is using smells. Okay, any kind of smell. Retailers uh, are learning more and more about this. The gentleman here must know about that, correct? There are machines that produce certain scents. If you are in a shopping center and you want to sell swimsuit, you may want to uh, create the scent of uh, coconut because it reminds people of summer. Yet, yeah? what are they doing there? They are eliciting the state of good memories that you have associated with summer in order to sell you bikinis. That's an example. The other thing that you want to do is to use light to your advantage. Now remember, in one way, human beings are like children, okay? And for some reason, I'm not sure why, nobody knows why, but we have this ability to get fascinated by certain things. We are particularly fascinated by things that oscillate. That's where the myth comes from of the hypnotist swinging the clock. There are two things there, the swinging and the visual. What we are seeing, how the light reflects on our eyes. Those things have the ability to fascinate us, to put us in what we call a hypersuggestible state. When you are in a hypersuggestible state, any suggestion that anyone will give you will go straight into the subconscious mind. What will that achieve? It will achieve that they will remember you, first of all. That's very important. Second is that you will be controlling the environment in a way that they're paying 100% of attention to you and that's something that you want. Otherwise, people will not remember you and neither will your message. The third thing that you can use for that, as we were saying, is smells, light, and the third thing is sound. Sound is also very important, and remember the principle that people are fascinated by oscillating things. Well, you can use light in an oscillating way, in an oscillating way, so that, for example, if you're a speaker, you can have, I've seen one, I've seen this uh, once actually, and it was very effective. They had in the background a light that was going from red to green to yellow very slowly, very softly, in a continuous loop for as long as the speaker was talking. That was behind the speaker. And it will achieve two things. Number one, to keep your attention there. But number two, to put you in this hypersuggestible state without you realizing it. That was very interesting. Actually, they didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> but that works. Now, the third thing is sound, as I say. Sound, very important, also oscillating. Anybody here likes the, sound, the uh, songs of Kylie Minogue? Yeah, I'll do. I'll do. Yeah, some of you, yeah. Do you remember songs like Get Out of My Way or The One? Come next time that you, see, that you uh, hear those songs, the number of times that that lady repeats a certain 
a certain expression, a certain word. Okay? Repetition helps association. That's very important. Okay? But also, if you notice something else, I was analyzing this music because I was saying to my partner the other day, Kylie Minogue's music is hypnotic in itself. There, there is something there. One day I'm going to do a, a paper on this. Okay, what I discover is the guitars. Kylie Minogue uses in her songs guitars that go like this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anything that goes straight and is dry and cut doesn't particularly help. But anything that comes and goes helps to put us in a semi-hypnotic state. Once you have that semi-hypnotic state of people, then anything you say will go straight to the subconscious mind. And there's where you want your message to go. Now the second tip of the day is to offer a hot drink as soon as you can. Now many of you are doing this already. You may say, oh, that's nothing special. Okay, but this is the important point. What you need to offer them, if possible, is hot chocolate. Ah, you didn't expect that one, did you? Hot chocolate, why? Think about it now. Research has been done, and what you want, surely, as soon as you meet them, is to give them something. Number one, the one thing in their hands will help them to connect with the present moment. And remember, that brings your attention to you, you need that. The second thing is that the smell is exciting another one of their senses, okay? And the more senses you can excite on a person, the more you will have their attention and the more you will put them in that state that I'm mentioning there. The third thing is that chocolate has good positive associations with, for most people. From the moment that we are born, if I ask here, most probably 80% of you here like chocolate. That's why David, that is a very smart man, has given us chocolate today. Giving it away, <laughs> giving it away. <laughs> There's another temptation. thing that is very important that David does that I, I would like to praise, and it's not because he gave me chocolate, but uh, he's one of the first people that I noticed in Fortnite working that he always does this. I'm not sure if he does it on purpose or he knows what he's doing, but he's doing two important things. He's, he's grabbing your attention through, by using a, suspe a specific object to do it, and he's associating that specific object with his message. That's very powerful and very memorable. If you have the opportunity to do what, what he does, always do it. Always do it. It doesn't matter really what you bring here, but it's important if you can show something physical because people will pay attention to anything that is novelty. That is I'm new, coming that in a bikini trend. next week. Next <laughs> I'm coming in a bikini next time to try and be I'll give you a mouse on it. Remember what I said about positive association. Oh, positive. I'm not sure if that will help you. Uh, <laughs> uh, like be two years before I visit half again then on that basis. The third thing that is uh, something very important for you to do as well is pay attention to images. Okay? If I go to most of your websites today, if I go to four networking websites, most probably I will find Terry's face there somewhere. I remember it. It's on the photographs. Okay? That's a good point. Again, I'm not sure if they did it because they know exactly what they're doing or did it, they didn't know and for other reasons because it looked nice and pretty. But it is very important to use the human face in your marketing materials. Very important. If possible, let me do a caveat there. Don't use yourself as models there, if possible. Okay, that's a, a marketing mistake typical and this is something that we need to avoid anyway, but that's for another talk. Okay, use models that represent the values of your company, okay, but use the human face as much as possible because since the moment that we are babies, we are programmed to lock our eyes into the eyes of other people. So you can use a human faces in two ways. Number one, looking at the person in a photograph, in your main photographs perhaps, uh, on your website, looking straight to the eyes of the viewer. The other way that you can use it is to make the model look at the text that you want their attention to go. Because as you can see, every time that we see people pointing somewhere, yes, we tend to look in the same direction. So wherever the attention of other people is, is where our attention will also tend to go. So if there's a very specific important point on your website that you want to address, make sure that the model is not looking at the viewer, the model is looking at the message. That's also an important thing. So remember, use humans. If you can use babies, use pets, things like that, they work even better. Now, I don't think that for the for the working 
website, the pets will work very well. <coughs> now, the other thing is if you sell any kind of physical product, I'll, I'll tell you something that you may be familiar with because you move in the retail environment as well. Okay, retailers use very well, particularly those that uh, sell fresh products, uh, this kind of setting up the environment. Okay, they will use light, they will use ice. The ice is not only to give the impression that the food is fresh, but it's also to reflect and amplify the light that hits that object. That's very important. The other thing that they do, and this is one tip for you that will also help if you sell any kind of physical product, is not only present them in the best possible way, okay, velvet, velvet as a background works very well for most products, particularly black velvet, okay. And uh, the second thing is use mirrors. The mirrors will give the impression that not only that you have more, but also will make things stand out a lot more. The other day I saw this in a, on a 24-hour shop. I, I don't think that they knew what they were doing. They, they just probably had the cupboard there. But they put the fruit right in front of the mirror. Hopefully they were that smart and they were doing it on purpose. The last thing that is uh, something also very important for you to remember is the timing, the timing when you are seeing people. You see, we are humans, so I'm not sure if you are um, familiar, you may be, with uh, blood sugar drops. <coughs> we extract the glucose that we need in order to survive yeah, from the food that we eat. The nutrients, everything, is natural fruits, vegetables, eggs, uh, meat, that sort of thing. Now, we extract the glucose that our brain needs in order to perform perfectly. Now, throughout the day, we have oscillations in the levels of glucose in our, in our blood. What happens is that when we are down in glucose, what happens is that we tend to not to be in the best mood. Some people have sweaty palms, some people feel nausea, some people feel this abstract general feeling of something that is not right, but they don't know what it is. Okay? The last thing that you want is that feeling associated with your product or your person. So there is where my tip comes. See all your prospects. The best time to see your prospect is one hour after lunch. Two hours, particularly for people that work nine to five, is a bit too late. Their mind at four o'clock will already be in five o'clock. Their mind will not be on you. Their mind at 12 o'clock is, is making them feel this uncomfortable feeling that you don't want associated with you. So it's very important that you find out the time at which they eat even if it's a sandwich, a fizzy drink, and a pack, a pack of crisps, okay, that's still lunch. Okay? That would make them feel better. And contact them one hour later. Okay? Before it would be too early, after it would be too late, because they're already in the next day. Particularly on a Friday, that would help a lot. Now, the last tip, this is just the bonus, okay? but it's also very important. I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of politicians they, had to, to, they tend to use, on certain specific occasions, a particular color of tie. Okay? Now, I would like to ask you, do you know what is the color that is the favorite, the, the favorite of people in general, that uh, people have list, uh, list of something against? Um, do you know what color that would be? Any red, guess? Red. Red. Red? Okay. So, would you think that red would be the color that is most favored by most people? So it seems to be by politician. Okay. I like navy blue. Okay. Grey. Okay, grey, blue, red. Okay, it is blue. This color here is the one that is uh, likely to be liked by most people. Okay. Now, making it all, putting it all together now. Manage the environment, elicit states, lead their imagination. Okay. Then associate those states, positive states, with you. You smell sounds and sight. Yes? And also use mirrors, use light, uh, as I said before. You can even use music. We could talk about that in some, at some other time. But the most important thing for you to remember is that we have two channels and you want to interact with the second channel. The more you interact with the second channel, the easier it will be for you to sell without making any effort to sell. Thank you. That's really good.
Yeah, just a two quick questions. Tell me. Just going to make just going to make a point about environment. You're absolutely right about environment. And often when we meet people, we have to meet them in pubs or bars or cafes with televisions. And that's really, really important, what you say about light and, light and sound. Even if the television is on and there's no sound, it's a distraction. Mm. So always try and get to the venue first so you can pick where you're going to meet and position yourself and the person you're going to talk to so neither of you can see a television or a fruit machine do you know because what? the flashing lights distract. Do you know what's the best way to do that? Make sure that you are against the wall. There's no distraction there. Absolutely. So always you position yourself with a blank wall behind you and then we'll concentrate. Now, very quick tip, you can also use gestures for this, okay? For example, if I tell you, from this moment on you're going to concentrate only on my face and you're going to feel that the more I talk, the more you feel interested in what I say. You see, these kind of words and the gestures and when you are associating certain states with yourself by making subtle gestures, are picked up by the subconscious mind, but they're not picked up by the conscious mind. People don't realize that. There's a world that is very interesting on how to do these things. I can help you, just ask me some time. Any other questions, very quick? Just back up what you said about the supermarkets. They take the air from the bread section and pump it to the front door, the air from the coffee machine, pump it to the front door. Ah, excellent. The produce sections have always got mirrors on, they're always color coordinated. They use uh, blackboards yeah. to give that feeling of countryside yeah, and, and, yeah, and they, they sprinkle water on the fruits and vegetables mm. that don't need that water particularly, but they just look fresher with that. Javier, absolutely brilliant. Um, I will leave my time.